All right, testimony of eyewitnesses. Skeptics charge. Remember, I, I put in here 24 charges that I'm used to, the ones that I've been confronted with the most when I'm out sharing, when I'm talking to non-believers. This one is, is there any, was there anybody really alive who stood behind what Jesus said? Or can you find contradictory evidence? Right? We talked about people outside the Bible and what they said. There's no contradictory evidence. If anything, it strengthens our position. Now we're looking at accounts of eyewitnesses. Okay, so in 2 Peter 1.16, right? Very powerful verse. Peter's writing, and he says this. We did not follow cunningly devised fables. When we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So he, this is what the Bible does all the time. It invites criticism. We didn't come up with fables that were cunningly made up to try to convince you that what you're reading uh, thousands of years later is true. We actually saw it. We actually saw it happen. We're in the context of the New Testament now he's speaking. So let's take a look. We've got Andrew who was crucified on an X-shaped cross. You have Peter who was crucified upside down, historical records. Matthew who was run through with a sword. You've got James, the first pastor of the church, who was beheaded. You've got Bartholomew who was run through with the sword. You've got Jude who was killed with the sword. You've got Thomas who was crucified. And you've got Philip who was crucified. All right, so you have these disciples who are all martyred for their deaths, right? And remember when we studied Simon Greenleaf, we talked about him, right? The Royal Professor at Harvard University of Law, who is still, still to this day the leading authority on Jurisprudence, Judas Pruence. <laughs> when it comes to evidence-based arguments. So they still study him in universities on how to put together evidence for an argument. So he wrote his book, An Examination of the Testimony of the Four Evangelists by the Rules of Evidence Administered in Court of Justice. And he said, it's impossible the apostles could have persisted in affirming the truths they had narrated had not Jesus Christ risen from the dead. He's basing it on evidence in the court of law. You can literally send someone to their death and not see that person commit the crime. So how do we do that today? The evidence, right? And he's the one who wrote the book on it. And the key thing is, why would anybody willingly die for what they know is a lie? People die for things all the time. Lots of cults have had people go to their deaths, but not if they know it's a lie. People don't do that. These, these guys had ample opportunity, especially Peter, to renounce it, to save their own skin, and none of them did. To be successful in a lie, conspiracy, whatever you want to call it. Number one, fewest number involved. So obviously, if it's you and one other person, it's a little better. You can do a better job of controlling it and not getting lost. So that's a problem because there are a lot of people in this one, right? So that's the first one. Second one, least amount of communication that you have to do between the liars. As the web gets more complicated, as your, your story gets more embellished, you're in trouble, right? You want to minimize your lie to be as simple and straightforward as you can so you don't screw it up, right? Number three, if you can keep it within the family, right? A lot, a lot easier than, the, how many times have you seen this happen where some guy who's in jail shares with his buddy in the cell about something that happened 30 years ago, and now the case is opened again because of the testimony, right? So if you can keep it within a small family network, 
and you can have the, a small number and the communication is simple, you have a higher chance of success. If you can have the least amount of pressure involved on your conspiracy. In other words, nobody's attacking it, nobody's suspicious about it? Right. You know, if I did this, you've probably done this all the time. If you have a, uh, just a couple of buddies and you steal a cookie, you take a cookie and you're not, your mom tells you not to, and you share it with your brother or sister and say, look, it, we're going to be in good shape if you just don't tell anyone. And she probably won't even notice, so the pressure is probably going to be low. And even if she brings it up, you can say, Mom, you just miscounted. Then you can probably keep the lie together. You, it makes sense, right? <laughs> That's why Darwin's leaders, teachers, want you to not criticize. That's right. That's right. Keep it down, whatever you can do. That's why they call us idiots. Why do you think the testimony in the marketplace, our testimony, is being driven as we're idiots? Because the, the evidence is so compelling, right? It, it, it points to that as well. Forgot that one. Close proximity of liars. So you don't want a member of your group living in another city, right? You want them tight together, preferences in a family, few number, um, least amount of, the story needs to be real simple, don't need a lot to it and not a lot of pressure. You can get away with anything. If you can put all those together, you can get away with a lie, is what he's saying. It's not reasonable they were lying. Oh, okay. This is a detective in, in the LA Police Department for 30, 40 years who became a Christian, and what he did in cold case Christianity is applied the same tools he uses to solve cases with the Gospels. And he's looking at them going, um, they didn't meet any of this criteria <laughs> for a successful lie. There's way too many people involved. You got 500 people rising. Um, people are talking all over the place. You can't keep it hushed. You've got uh, way outside the family. You got people all over the place. As a matter of fact, when you read Acts, you got people from Rome showing up. You got all these Greeks, everybody. Um, a lot of pressure because they're going to give their life the, the maximum pressure. And they're not close together. They're getting spread all out and torn apart, right? And they, weren't, they didn't get any money. They didn't become wealthy. Uh, there was no sex involved. And there's, not only was there no power, they were, they were actually minimized. So there's nothing there. There's no motivation. So the evidence by far points to it happened. 